तक राधिका श्रीमती राधिका हाइएस्ट लवर ऑफ कृष्णा बट सी टेलिंग न प्रेम गंधो सी जरा पिमे हरौ क्रंदामी सौभाग्य भरम प्रकाश बंसी बिलास्यानन अवलोकनम बिना एकात्म जब प्राण पतंग काना ओ ऑल टेल दैट ओ यू हैव सो मच अफेक्शन फॉर कृष्ण बट आई हैव नॉट ए स्मेल इवन ऑफ प्रेम इफ देर वाज प्रेम दैट सी टेल when you will take them from a water at once they will give up their life and is still am alive krishna is very far away dwarka and dear and dear and still alive so narottam thakur is also telling like that he is still the bhakt not ordinary bhakt but he is telling he is imitating no not imitating really he is it comes from his core of heart hari hari dipale you know that he was always engaged in krishna service kirtan and doing even nityananda prabhu gaur and his parikar used to come on his kirtan and began to dance and he is telling bifale janam what did we do we don't lament never lament we gurudev gets the seed of bhakti and it was just sprouting even and left totally immersed in sense gratification hi hi pai on me bifale janam gavai na he is telling without any gain i have in what i waste my time waste my time oh this name is golok from golok coming and it will fulfill our whole desire what you will even krishna prem gopi prem it will give hmm? but we are neglecting you know chaitanya mahaprabhu and nitanand prabhu they came from golok vrindavan and to distribute this hari naam ratina hoilo keno tai hmm jati ka bol giving up महाप्रभु टोल नित्यानंद पर हरिदास Go and distribute Hari name. Don't want any bhikkha, only this. And thus they liberated Jagai Madhai. Even she was beaten. But what to do? You should think. I have called you all to think over this matter and to be like that. Oh, you have been dragged in your. all life from beginning of creation beginning of creation don't tell bhav in these things never be like ram chandra khan disciple of shrinivas acharya how he left everything he was he married and he was going in palakwin and shrinivas acharya was sitting there and he went to do pranam and he told oh you are coming to do pranam for being happy oh without any fear you have collected a nagin that poisonous 
snakes. And you are taking in his snake. And she will bite and you will die. Oh, at once he gave up. Told that, oh, oh, you should take this girl to his father. And he did not return back to his home. And he took Harinam and Diksha and everything from Srinivas Sachar. So she was so high class of Vaishnav that Narottam Thakur is praying to Srinivas Acharya. Oh, you are my friend. Please give the association of all our kirtans I have collected from oh, high, high Vaishnav. Narottam Thakur, Lochan Das. Premananda Das, Bhakti Vinod Thakur, and I have brought to you to sing and to realize. But you are neglecting, I am saying. You should always give very deep attention and try to realize and try to follow, not only singing. I don't want singing only. I don't want preaching only. Then it will be like karma preaching. If himself practicing bhakti yoga and then preaching, then it will be bhakti. bhakti. Otherwise, no. Huh? I have come to tell you all. And you should try to follow. Don't delay. But. Oh, Namo Vishnu Pada. You. Okay, no need of harmonium. He will do so too. Namo Vishnu Pada. Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Srimate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Iti Nami Jai 
जय श्री कृष्ण चेतन प्रभु नित्यानंद श्रिया द्वैत गदाधा शिवा सदी गोवृंद जय से कृष्ण से कन्ना प्रभु नित्यानंद श्रिया दैत गदाधार शिवा सारी गौर भक्त वृंद जय से
Swami Maharaj ki jai. Ila Sri Bhakti Vedanta Swami Maharaj Pampad ki jai. Ila Bhakti Pragyan Keshav Goswami Maharaj ki jai. Sri Rupa Nuga Guru Varga ki jai. Kaveer Bhakta Vrinda ki jai. Ila Guru Dev Transcendental Badger Festival 2008 ki jai. Oh, come on, come Narad, without invitation, he used to go to each door to door, especially those who were fallen, like Prachin Barha and others. Srila Prabhupada Bhakti Siddhan Sarsati Goswami. He thought that if you will do like follow the character of Srila Rupa Goswami, Sanatana Goswami, being only in Braja, then how can we help others? Better not to be Goshtanandi, um, Bhajananandi, but with Bhajananandi, Goshtanandi. Also. So first Srila Bhakti, Bhakti Siddhan Saraswati in the line of Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur he started. He initiated so many very jewel boys, learned of high goal, and after that he gave them sannyas and told them, oh, you should preach Gaur Bani here and there. So follow yourself also. You should read Jaiva Dharma Bhakti Rasami Sindhu Ujjalin Mani, the books of Sanatana Goswami, Vishwana, Chakvati, Thakur, Rupa Goswami and others. Be qualified that you can oh, give the answer and remove the doubts of peoples in this world and send them door to door. <laughs> Don't take heavy amount of money from them, only one paisa, two paisa, only this. And they began to preach. My Guru then came and he was given a box that, and he was the son of a very high class Yamindar, Lord, 
and told that you should go door to door. And he used to go door to door. In the morning, only taking some... Uh, and then going whole day in very hot summer day and collecting one paisa and telling why we are taking and then all our Gaurvani they used to tell them and very soon result came high class of learned persons, doctor, engineers all began to come and join. Hmm? Oh, this Abhacharan Prabhu, he was also in that trap of Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur. Bhakti Siddhan Sarasati trap. He came. And then he became penniless. Right and there. And then how? Anyhow, our Guru Maharaj possibly told, you must take sannyas. And he took and after that he preached everywhere. In couple years, hmm, he traveled everywhere, established centers and published so many translation books, authority books. And that preached. That is why you are coming to me. Because I served him and he gave me benediction. So you are coming to me. So I have come to preach their mission. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So I have come in Alachua, you know, that we started the glory of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu from beginning. And so many things we discussed there. Raramanand also was discussed there. So I want that here we should start from Sanatana Goswami, his Siksha, and then Rup Siksha, and then if time we can discuss about Ratha Jatra. Ratha Jatra is coming. And if you are not, then in Italy, Rath Jatra will There we will be, and Rath Jatra day will also come. So, you know that Sirup Goswami, Sanatan Goswami, Anupam Goswami, they came very rustical, high Brahmin family. In their boyhood, they were very, very intelligent, over-intelligent. Hmm? One day, the Muslim Hussein Sahabasa, very powerful, he was on the tomb, and tomb was under construction. He told to mystery, Mission. Oh, you are very high class of qualified mission. You have made such a wonderful land making. He told, Oh Prabhu, I can make more better than this. Oh, you can make. Then after that you will make another place more better than this. And he took his sword and cut that you should not make better than this. And then one associate was standing of him and he told, Oh, go at once and bring. Go and get. But what to bring and whom to bring, where to go, he did not do. And he was at in angry mood, angry mood. So he came down and thinking, What should I take? Him? Then he thought that if I will be here, then king will cut me also. So what to do? He left that city and went to another city. And there Rup Sana, um, Sanatan Goswami as a Santos and Rup Goswami, Amar and Anupam.
three brothers were there. Hmm? One day, Sanatan Goswami, Sajjan, uh, Santosh, saw that a person very suffering and very sad his <coughs> But why he called that person and told, why you are so unhappy? unhappy? What you are thinking? Oh, he told them, associate of Hussain Shah Barsha. And he told me to bring, but what? So I left of, out of fear that place and I have come here and wha what should I collect and I should take? Then Sanat Santosh told, at that time where was Hussain Shah Barsha on the tomb? What was going there? Oh, it was under construction. And what became there? Oh, he killed that mission and told me, oh, go bring. Then he told that you should collect some high class of qualified missions and take them to king. And he did so. When he went to king, he told, oh, he began to laugh. Oh, how you brought? And I forget to tell you because I was at that time very angry. Oh, then he told me, there are three boys, brothers, very intelligent. They saw me unhappy and called me and asked, why you are unhappy? I told, oh, you should collect very high class of mission and take it. So I had brought. Then he told, oh, you should go return back to the brothers and you should call three brothers. And when they came, he examined their knowledge and saw that they are very, very intelligent, more than me. They can control my whole kingdom. kingdom. So he made Sanat um, Santosh uh, his prime minister and Amar private secretary, and Anupam, the head of the economic department. So the three brothers began to... And change the name also. And also change. Sakar Malik, Dabir Khar, Anupam nothing. <laughs> and thus, after some time, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he came with his thousand and thousands of devotees, and he was going to Vrindavan. There he was, Prime Minister Sanatana Goswami. He came in the night, and he gave his nephew Jiv Goswami very small one in his lotus feet. And then he requested, Prabhu, you should not go Vrindavan like this. This is not Proper. You should go only one or with any other person. Don't take anyone. Otherwise, this king was th thinking that you are coming with army and he would have attacked, but we have checked it. So, otherwise, you can be like that. So, Mahaprabhu returned back. And then he went to Jagannath Puri and from there next year, he came to Vrindavan by Jharikhan, very deep forest. So many almond, uh, elephants and Tiger. tigers and bears. Lion. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. And the elephant mad also, oh, they began to go, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Deers and tigers, oh, both on one place with friendship. And they became like this. Wonderful. And then he went to Vrindavan, but he could not stay there for a long time. Why? Because sometimes he used to become very um, overwhelmed by moods. When he used to go to Govardhan, Nandagaon, Varshana, and he remembered all these things, Gopis and Nanda Baba, Jasoda, then it was chance that he may reveal that I am Krishna. That is very soon he returned back. 
in the when he was returning in prayag he met rupa goswami and anupam goswami and he gave 10 days ocean of rush but one mahaprabhu is telling i am giving you one drop and then what is bhakti what is bhakti ras what is just thai bhav what is anurag ragatmik raganuga all these things in detail and what is krishna tattva what is radha tattva what is prem tattva and all other things he gave and he sent both to go bindavan and from bindavan you should come to puri and in the way he was returning he came to varanasi sanatan goswami after meeting chaitanya mahaprabhu he became totally detached from all things he wanted to rem- to give up the resignation from prime minister hmm? rupa goswami and anupam goswami has left before they had gone to meet mahaprabhu and he was waiting <coughs> he left his job sitting in the his house oh discussing shrimad bhagavatam and hussain sahab aata came i heard that you are ill and that is why you are not coming to um, office hmm? you are my elder brother had given us everything over your head hmm? but you are here sitting and discussing shrimad bhagavat with a oh, very pandit other pandit he told that prabhu now i cannot do that job please take my resignation and you should engage another prime minister oh there were so many persons they wanted to be prime minister <laughs> then he told that you i am going to jagannath puri to invite in vain and you should come with me he told that i cannot come then he they have been prison and then snatan was in prison and he came alone with army in the meantime snatan goswami told the jailer jailer was appointed by him <laughs> so he told that i have appointed you you know now you should repay me something i am giving this 5000 golden coins to you and you should give up me oh i cannot then he gave 10 7000 and then he oh saliva coming down from mouth and sanatan goshami i will be darvesh muslim sadhu I will go to Mecca. I will not be here. You should tell that he was going to Latin, and he jumped in the river. Anyhow, we could not found him. He has died. You should tell. And when Hussain Sahab Aata came, they told. And in the meantime, we had servant, Hussain, and he left that place in the night, a very very deep forest. in the forest there were some that is having one astrology astrology astrologist astrologist told oh two persons are coming and they have seven eight eight golden coins oh let them come and then came and one person of that type came and very politely and humbly he told that oh now night you should spend there and you should take rest and we will provide you so delicious food and everything then he took them to their house and there they thought that we will kill and take that eight golden coins 
But Sanatan Goswami is very intelligent. Why these persons without any gain are there must be something behind it. And then he asked his tapan, Oh, have you something? Oh, I have something. Why? To say, serve you, give me. Then he kept one and gave seven. Then he gave it to Dakash Sardar and he became happy. Oh, oh, you have saved me. Today I would have killed you and taken. But you should know that one coin is even with your servant. And then he again went to that servant and told, have you something more? At one coin, give me. Now, you should take it and return back to home. Don't come with me. This is like a jam. Jam means death. You should return. If you want to do bhajan, I am telling for this, not a his story. That if you want to do bhajan, give up everything. Sanatan has gave everything. Not a single pie he kept for him. Especially sannyasi should be like that. Nothing. That our attachment should be given to them, that thing. Down. <coughs> and thus Sanatana Goswami came to Varanasi in a Muslim base, in the way his sister's husband, Sri Kant, was there to buy horses for Hus and Singh Bhattva. He saw, oh, <coughs> oh Sanatana Prabhu is coming. And he came from Dhum and when first Sanatan Goswami was there and he saw that, oh, he is like a beggar. And he began to be, and anyhow he told that I will give you some money. He told, don't give, I don't like, I have everything. Then he, anyhow he requested and gave a boat kambal. Blanket. Blanket. Very precious. And then he took and came in Varanasi. Anyhow, who you knew by anyone that a sannyasi has come, he is always singing, doing kirtan of Krishna. So in this way he knew and he went there, Chandrasekhar Bhavan, where Mahaprabhu was. And Chandrasekhar. Tapan Mishra. No, no. Tapan Mishri used to go to take prasadam and used to live in Chandrasekhar house. So she was there. Mahaprabhu told, O oh Chandrasekhar, go and bring a high class of devotee has come here to meet me. Bring him. He went there. I saw no Vaishnava, Tulsi Mala and other things, Tilak, nothing. He served it a Muslim. He returned back, told Prabhu, here is no, there is no any high class of devotee. Hmm. Then... Anybody is there? Anybody? Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, oh, bring him, call him. And then Mahaprabhu entered, Mahaprabhu saw, and at once he ran. And embraced him. And he was telling, weeping, I am Muslim now. Don't you don't me. touch me, don't touch me. Oh, I'm nothing, I'm not touching, I'm touching you to be purified myself. And then, anyhow, he was there. Then Mahaprabhu told, oh, take him to Ganges. And he should take bath and remove his, and save, and be like a gentleman and a Vaishnava. <laughs> And then he returned back and took, and he said, then, oh, everything. But he was looking after him. He thought, that, why he is looking after me? Then saw that, oh, I have that boat kambal, very costly. But Mahaprabhu did not like. Then at once he returned back, 
And he saw that any Bengali sadhu, oh, he has a one ton like a wheel. And told that, can you give me and take my. Oh, you are joking with me? You yeah, are joking, not you should take. And took his. Mahaprabhu San became very happy. Oh, this is the symptom to be a Vaishnava. Nishkin Chanasya Bhagavat Mane. And then he was there. There Mahaprabhu told, Oh, Krishna is very merciful. He had taken you from dark well, stool well. He told, I don't know Krishna who is, but I know you only. By your mercy I have left all these things and come. And after that, Sanatana Goswami, with a request, very, very humble way, he asked, Hey, Ami, Nahi Jani. In, before, he inspired um, Raya Ramananda, gave inspiration in him, and again he asked himself, and by his inspiration he was answering. Raraman told, I don't know what you are asking. I am like a soup, soup pakshi, parrot. What you are inspiring me, I am telling you. And then he knew everything, and then he became jewel of um, ocean of jewels. Now here, the question are coming from where? No, from Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He is inspiring to ask such question. Sanatan Goswami, you to know that, and this body Sanatan Goswami. What is the need of asking? Hmm? But he asked for whole world, for us. And then you begin. You can come Hare aside here towards Oh, book always. <laughs> Without book, you cannot. <laughs> he was doing kirtan but looking book. Without book, they cannot walk. <laughs> Om Jnana Timirandasya Jnana Anjana Salakaya Chakshurun Militam Jena Tasmai Sri Gurave Namaha Vancha Kalpaturubhyas Chakripa Sindhu Bevacha Patitanam Bhavane Bhyo Vaishnavi Bhyanamo Namaha Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadha Sri Vasadi Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare. First of all, I'm offering my Dandavat Pranams, my Shraddha Pushpanjali to the lotus feet of my beloved Gurudev, Nitya Lila Pravishta, Om Vishnu Pad, Asto Tarasata Sri Shila, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Maharaj Prabhupada. And secondly, my equal Dandavat Pranams, my Shraddha Pushpanjali, to the lotus feet of my beloved Siksha Guru Devs, Nityalila Pravishtom Vishnu Pad, Sri Shila Bhakti Raksha, Sri Dhargo Swami Maharaj, and Om Vishnu Pad, Asto Tarasata Sri Shila Bhaktivedanta Narayan Goswami Maharaj, our beloved Srila Guru Dev. Also, my Dandavat Pranams, to all my Rupanuga Guru Varga, 
and to six Goswamis headed by Srila Rupa and Sri Sanatan Goswami Pad, and to all the Vaishnavas, Vaishnavis, friends and guests who have come to this auspicious Harikatha festival assembly in the presence of our beloved Gurudev. So this subject matter of Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita, the conversation which took place between Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Srila Sanatan Goswami is called Sanatan Siksha. The instructions given by the Supreme Lord Himself to His unalloyed pure devotee, Sri Sanatan Goswami. But as Srila Gurudev just pointed out, actually Srila Sanatan Goswami, he already understood all transcendental knowledge and truth. But Sri Goranga Mahaprabhu wanted to speak this divine knowledge so that it could be disseminated within this world. And he chose his own personal associate to be like the student. And he inspired within his heart uh, that he should ask particular questions which would enable Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to now speak all of these subject matters to give the proper education to all the fallen conditioned souls in this material world that they can receive knowledge, divine spiritual knowledge by which they can be uh, elevated and become purified from the material illusory energy of Krishna and come to understand who is Krishna, Krishna Tattva, who is the Supreme Absolute Truth and what are his energies and what is bhakti, what is the divine relationship between the jiva and the Supreme Lord. So in this way the conversation began as Srila Sanatan Goswami very humbly he fell at the lotus feet of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu with a blade of grass between his teeth as a sign of deep, deep humility. This is the quality of a pure Vaishnava. He has no false ego, no false pride. He doesn't identify himself at all uh, with this temporary illusory world. So he is in pure state of consciousness. And Srila Sanatana Goswami came in such a humble manner and then he presented to Goranga Mahaprabhu this que these questions. He said, K Ami, who am I? And also he asked him, Why? Kene Amare Tapatroi. Jare Tapatroi. Tapatroi means the threefold miseries that are experienced by every single living entity in this material world. It is called tapatrai. He was asking, why am I always being given so many sufferings? Why am I here, suffering in this world? Who am I? What is my real identity? And why am I here in this world suffering? These are very basic, fundamental questions that every single living being who attains the human form of life should ask themselves. If they are not asking these two questions, then actually they have not yet qualified themselves as uh, genuine human beings. They are actually still on the level of animals. Why? Because in the material world, uh, the animals are eating, sleeping, mating, defending. Human beings they also do the same four activities. But what uh, is the difference between them? Human being has higher intelligence. What is this intelligence for? What is the purpose of it? Just to learn how to eat better, to sleep better, to mate better? Currently, in modern civilization, this is what is going on. The human society is advancing with technology and so much science to do what? simply to eat and sleep better, to enjoy the material energy and to enjoy sense gratifications. But this is not the purpose of human life. purpose of human life is to inquire about the Absolute Truth. Atato Brahma Jigyasa. This is the beginning of Vedic knowledge. 
where the living entity begins to ask these fundamental questions and to seek out the absolute answers to these questions. So Sanatana Goswami, he asked, K. Ami, who actually am I? And why am I always suffering in this material world from three types of miseries? He said, if I don't know the answer to these questions, how can I be benefited actually? How can I really attain uh, my own real benefit? So, this material world is a place of suffering. Anyone who thinks that the material world is actually meant for enjoyment is to be considered a mad person. Why? Because enjoyment here is very, very minimal, but suffering is very much. Hmm? Just like, for example, our material body. Uh, this is one type of material misery, of the three types of miseries. We all have this material body. So many pains, so many sufferings are experienced by this material body. For example, we have our little toe on our foot. And how much pleasure can we gain from our little toe? But how much pain can we gain from it? We've all experienced. So therefore, this material body, it is constructed in such a way that actually it will simply supply endless amounts of suffering. Huh? And also our mind, our subtle body that we have. We have actually two bodies given to us in this material world. The gross physical body made of the material elements, earth, water, fire, air, ether. And then we have also a subtle body made out of uh, mind, intelligence, and ahankar, false ego. So this, uh, these two coverings, like a coat and a shirt, uh, so we are all covered by this physical material body and the subtle body of our mind also experiences so much suffering. We experience so many worries, so many anxieties, so many embarrassments. So in this way, this is only one type of suffering. Uh, it is called adhyatmic, the suffering that comes from our own atma. Atma means this self or the self of the external body and mind. Then there is adibodic. Adibodic misery means other living beings in this world, either in the species of humans or in other species like animals, insects, even microbe germs. They are inflicting so much suffering and misery upon us also. I don't think there is anyone sitting here who has not had misery and suffering caused to them by another human being in this life. So, in this way, we constantly undergo the sufferings caused by other living entities. And then the third type of misery is Adi Daivik. Adi Daivik means misery is caused by the demigods. That means this material nature, which has all the elements of nature, the weather conditions, the sun, the wind, and so forth, too much rain, too little rain, too hot, too cold, earthquakes, yes, earthquake like in China, and so many floods and hurricanes like this. The material nature is constantly causing suffering. So an intelligent person asks the question, why? Why am I suffering? I didn't ask for this. Huh? Nobody requested from me. Do you want to suffer? Here, we'll give you this situation in this world. Now you can suffer. The question should be, why? Why am I currently now suffering in this world? I don't want suffering. And who actually am I? Am I just this temporary physical body made out of skin, bones, blood, flesh, stools and urine and other abominable substances? Just a bag filled with these things? Is that what I am? And at the time when this body becomes finished, am I also finished? So this basic fundamental question was asked by Sanatan Goswami, Who am I? This is the beginning of human life. To understand what is our actual identity. So Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he heard these questions from Sanatan Goswami. He told Sanatan Goswami, Actually, I know that you are really a, a transcendental personality and you already know uh, the answer to this. But it is the quality of the great souls, the great spiritual personalities, 
that they ask such kind of questions to benefit others. Also, you should see that. <laughs> so then, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, now he began to answer the questions of Srila Sanatana Goswami. And first of all, he answered this question, Who am I? He said, Jivair Sarupahoy, Krishner Nityadas, Krishner Tatasta Shakti, Peda Ved Prakash. So this is a very, very famous quotation. It is like the fundamental basis of our Vaishnava philosophy. Jivair Surupoy Krishner Nityadas. What is the eternal Swarup? Swarup means my, my own form. Now, as we just said, we have this temporary physical body. But is this our own form? No. Because this form will drop in just a few years and it will merge back into the earth. Then what happens to me? What actually am I? So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu immediately went directly to answer this question, Jivar Surupoy Krishna Nityadas. He identified what is all of our real identity. And what is that? We are the eternal servant of Krishna. Every single living entity in this material world, whether they are in the human form, whether they are in the plants, the animals, the insects, the aquatics, 8,400,000 species of life throughout this universe, in whatever form they are, actually they, are not, they have only one identity. They are the eternal Nitya Krishna Das, eternal servant of Krishna. Servant of God. Because Jivara uh, Tatasta Shakti Beda Beda Prakash. Because who is the Jiva soul? We are the living entity that is inhabiting this physical body. We are the conscious uh, unit of eternal consciousness called Chit Kanu, uh, a tiny, tiny atomic particle of consciousness. And that consciousness, Sri Krishna tells in Bhagavad Gita. He says, actually, this material nature of mine, it is my inferior energy, earth, water, fire, etc. But he says, besides this temporary material inferior energy, there is another energy in this world. And Krishna says, Prakritim viti me param. It is my superior potency. That is Jiva Bhuta, the living being, the conscious entity. And that living being is my energy. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said here, Krishna Tatasta Shakti. What kind of energy is it of Krishna's? It is his marginal potency. Each one of us is the eternal energy of God. Now Mahaprabhu began to describe that the Sri Krishna has three primary potencies. His energies are actually infinite and unlimited, but amongst his energies, three are prominent. One is his parashakti, uh, his superior potency. Vishnu shakti para prokta, uh, chetasyapya tata para, avidya karma sangyanya, tatiya shaktir ishyate. So actually, Sri Krishna, he has his parashakti, his superior potency. And what is that? That is the eternal spiritual realm, the spiritual world beyond this temporary material universe. This universe is made out of his inferior Maya Shakti potency, which is illusory energy always changing, just like this whole universe. It was created at one point, and it will be destroyed at another point. And every object within this world is deteriorating and changing constantly. So in the same way, in the spiritual, in the spiritual world, every object there is never changing. It is neither created nor destroyed. It is eternal. So that superior energy, that potency is existing in the eternal transcendental world. And then between the material world and the spiritual world is what is called the uh, Tatasta Shakti, the Jiva Shakti, the living entity. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu explains that just like when you have the bank of a river, there is the water flowing in the river, 
then there is the land next to the water. But in between, there is the bank. It is called tata. Tata means the margin area between the water and the land. Sometimes it is covered by water, sometimes it is uh, not covered. So all jivas within this material world, we are called tatasta shakti potency, the marginal energy of the Supreme Lord. We can either be here in this inferior energy covered by these physical material bodies and, and uh, subtle bodies, or we can attain our eternal position in the spiritual world because Krishna says in Gita that we are his superior potency. We are of that transcendental substance which is eternal. So every living entity is Nitya Krishna Das, eternal servant of Krishna. But they have forgotten this. Because the jiva soul has turned his face. Krishna buli se jiva anadi bahir muk atayeva maya tari deya samsara duk. Here, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is explaining that when the jiva soul forgets Krishna, oh. he forgets. Thank you. Yo. So to explain what is Tatastha Shakti and how he came. He came from Golok Vrindavan or from where? Hmm? All these things. One thing, Sanatan Goswami, oh here. <coughs> Sanatan Goswami asked, K Ami. Then second thing, Kere Jare Tapatrai. Yaha Nahi Jani. And third, Three things. Means, first is Sambandha, second is Abhidhe, and third is Prayoyan Tattva. So he is asking, Ke Ami, who am I? Is this body or inside anything? So this is called Sambandha Gyan. Hmm? What is the relation between us and Krishna? Hmm? And then Kemane Hitaha Yaha Nahi Jani. Without Bhakti, we cannot know. Hmm? So here Bhakti. Bhakti, Vaidhi Bhakti, Raganuga Bhakti, and then oh, so many things. In this it will come Thai Bhav, Anubhav, Yavichari, and all other things. And then third, Kemnahitha. Without Prem you cannot have that Sukh. So this is Prayojanta. He asked by these three things. Kemanehitha means without bhakti cannot be achieved. Krishna Prem. So sadhan, that is Abhidhe, is Krishna Bhakti. This is question. Then, here question is that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu told, Jvera Sarupaya Nitya Krishna Das. And after that, at once he told, Nitya Das, but Krishna Tatastha Shakti. What is Tatastha Shakti? How a Chetan Jeev, the ans of Krishna, he was involved in Maya. How it became? This is the question. You should clear all these things. Radhikaya Tadale Krishna Krishna Bhaktaya Tadabhaktaya Namo Namaha. So, first of all, our obeisances is Lord of Sri Guru Sri Gurudev, to Dandi Sanyasis, Vaishnavas, Vaishnavis. Sri Gurudev has given me instruction to try to help us to understand where Jiva has come from and what is Tatastha Shah.
this is a very important point, because unless we understand where we come from, then there will always be confusion who we are. If we don't know who we are, then how we can adopt the process to achieve our ultimate goal. Buddha was saying, Sambandha Bhagavan Abhideya Bhakti Bhai Krishna Prima Priyajan Veda Tri Tattva Koi. Haribo. Parafamwe. Sambandha Abhida Sambandha Bhagavan Abhideya Bhakti Bhai Krishna Prima Priyajan Veda Tri Tattva Koi. Snatan Goswami asked three questions relating to Sambandha Gyan. What is our sambandha? What is our relationship? What is everything's relationship? What is the center? Where does it come from? What is the common thread running through everything? That is Bhagawan. Abhideya, what are my activities in that relationship? Bhakti. And what is our goal? Prema. There were an answer to the first question of Sri Sanatan Goswami, Kiyami, who am I? Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu immediately replied, Jivera Sarupa Hoi Krishna Nitya Das. Tatasta Shakti Ar Veda Ved Prakash. So first we should understand the soul is an eternal servant of Krishna, Nitya Das. It's not that my service to Krishna be began on a certain date, no. The potency to serve Krishna, that is eternally, intrinsically part of the Jiva. It cannot be separated. Like heat cannot be separated from fire, the potency to render loving service to Krishna can never be separated from the jiva. Therefore it's called his swarup, his own form, his own true self. What is that? He is an eternal servant of Sri Krishna. And where does he come from? Tatasta Shaktiad Veda Ved Prakash. Now Sri Guruji asked, some people say, where do we come from? Do we come from Goloka Vrindavan? Are we a product of Maya? No. We are a product of Krishna's energy. Because it called. has been written that Nitya Das. So Nitya Das, how he can be? He can be only in Golupindavan. So it seems that oh Krishna, that person has forgotten and they have. It quest, be, uh, like so many think like that. Uh, but this is one type of craziness. Because in the spiritual world there is only Chit Shakti there. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said there are three types of energy. Vishnu Shakti, Tadapara, there's the Para Shakti, there's the Jeev Shakti, and there's the Maya Shakti. So in Goloka Vrindavan, there's no such thing as Maya or Jiva Shakti there. There is only Antaranga Shakti or Chit Shakti. Therefore, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu never said that Jiva is Chit Shakti. He said that we are a different type of energy called Tatasta Shakti. Another point is, especially Advaita Vaidis, they think there's no difference between Jiva and Bhagawan. They think Bhagawan has manifested himself as the Jiva. They think they have the philosophy of Eko Jiva Vad. There's only one Jiva, and that is the Supreme Lord. But in due to the influence of illusion, that Bhagawan, that Brahma has considered himself to be a Jiva. Therefore, this is also another type of madness. Therefore, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said. The Jiva, he is not a manifestation of this material world. He is not manifested from Maya. He is not manifested from the Supreme Lord. I mean, he is not the Supreme Lord. In fact, he is a completely different transformation of energy of the Supreme Lord. The Supreme Lord himself does not lose himself to transform into this world or to the Jivas. Therefore, Mahaprabhu, by establishing this, this tattva in the beginning of his teachings, he taught the philosophy of Shakti Parinam Vad. The jiva is a transformation of Bhagawan's shakti. Which shakti? Pujapad Padmanama has described. There are three shaktis of Vishnu, Chik shakti, Maya shakti, but we are not transformations of them. Therefore, Mahaprabhu said, Tatastar shakti ad, Veda Ved Prakash. So, Sri Bhaktivinoda Thakur and his explanation in Jayavadama, he explains, because we're using material language to describe something which is completely inconceivable, there may be some fault. Therefore, in my language, of course, because we're using material terms, we try to understand the main point. Bhagwan has three shaktis, and this shakti we're talking about now is called Tatasta Shakti or Jiva Shakti. It is completely distinct from the Parashakti or Maya Shakti. That Jiva Shakti is the shakti 
a transformation of which manifests us or the individual souls. We are not Swamksa or Krishna's direct expansions. We are the Jiva is called Vibhanamsa Tattva or separated parts and parcels. Therefore the word has been used Jiva Shakti or Satasta Shakti. The Jiva Shakti is a part of the Chit Shakti and Maya Shakti is a shadow of the Chit Shakti. So what is the meaning of Tatasta? Tata means bank, like Maharaj explained. The bank of a river, it's not land and it's not completely water. It's a marginal position in between both. Therefore, the, the Jiva, he comes from Tatasta Shakti and also his nature is Tatasta Shakti. Because we are called the marginal potency, the Jiva has a tendency to go towards the service of Bhagawan, the Surup Shakti, taking shelter of the Surup Shakti, he serves Sri Krishna, or he has a choice to take shelter of Maya Shakti, and then he serves the material energy. But the Jiva can never be independent. Either the Jiva will serve under the guidance of Surup Shakti, Yoga Maya, or else he'll be captured by the illusory potency. There was an explanation is given. The Jiva is a bit like a fish. A you know a flounder? He has eyes on top of his head. He can see both things. Therefore, the Jiva, he has, he has no experience because this Jiva, this Tatasta Shakti is in a neutral position because it's not the Chit Shakti, it's not Maya Shakti. Therefore, the influence of the three modes of nature are not working there. There's no Sattva Rajatama. Also, there's no Surup Shakti there. Therefore, the Jiva, because he's independent, he can see both things, but he, can't ha he doesn't have experience of it. It's like seeing a cupcake under, in a glass you know, counter. You can see it, but what it is, you can't taste. Therefore, the jiva has no experience in that condition that serving Krishna is ecstasy and coming towards Maya is suffering. But he has an independent choice because Bhagavan has given a jewel to each jiva that is the jewel of independence, swatantrata. Because without independence, there's no question of free love. There's no slave gangs in Goloka Vrindavan. Everyone there is rendering loving and voluntary service to Sri Krishna. That without this jewel of independence, there's no question of love. Therefore, the jiva, he has this tendency to go towards Krishna or to go towards Maya. Therefore, Krishna Bhuli say jiva anari bayarmuk ataiva maya taradeya samsari duk. When, if the jiva, by misuse of his independence, sorry, turns towards Maya, <laughs> then immediately he's captured by the Maya and she gives him covering, 24 coverings. First she covers him by chit, then a hanka, false ego, then in buddhi, intelligence, ma, man, mind, then the gross body made of earth, water, fire, air, ether, then come the karmindya, seeing, smelling, tasting, hearing, gyanindya, touch, then the karmindya, mo mechanic, uh, motiva moving of the hands and legs, digestion, speech, the genitals, rect and rectum. Therefore the jiva, if he wants to enjoy separately from Krishna, he turns towards maya, Immediately Maya covers him with these 24 coverings. He rotates to the 8,400,000 species of life trying to enjoy it. And if by the mercy of Guru and Shastri he can understand his original position, then he can rectify himself by the process of bhajan. Kori Guru Sevana Kori Krishnera Bhajana Maya Jari Chuti Pai Sri Krishnera Charana. By performing Guru Seva and performing bhajan of Krishna, the Jiva leaves Maya and comes back to the service of Bhagawan. But there is a chance that some jivas in the Tatasta region, because of good use of independence, they may directly turn towards Krishna directly. Why? Because they have independent choice. It's Srila Gaurgavan Maharaj said, because the jiva is weak, there is no Srila Shakti, 99% of jivas come to Maya, like we did. Thank you. One, one little bit. So the jiva, then if he turns towards Krishna, immediately Srila Shakti comes, and empowers him, gives him chitbal, spiritual strength, and according to his sarup, am I a servant of Ram, am I a servant of Parasaram, am I a servant of Narayan, am I a servant of Matsya or Kurma, or am I a servant of Dwokadish Krishna, am I a servant of Brajananandana Krishna, in Sakya Dasya, Bhatsali, or whatever I am, that potency that Krishna has given me, inherent within the Jeev, Sarup Shakti empowers that, and he goes directly to Goloka Vrindavan, and serves there. Therefore, conclusion is, we never came from Goloka Vrindavan because there is no Tatasta Shakti, there is no Tatasta Shakti there, there is no Maya Shakti there. Therefore, how the Jiva can fall from there, 
There's no Maya. There's no Tathagata there. Therefore, we did not come from Goloka Vrindavan. I just want to add one little thing. When Srila Swami Maharaj, Srila Prabhupada, he went back to Vrindavan, then his godbrother, Sri Obiel Kapoor, he asked him, Oh Maharaj, you are saying the Jiva fell from Goloka Vrindavan. Why are you saying this? This is completely incorrect. According to the teachings of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Then Srila Prabhupada, he says, Yeah, I know, but Mahavad is so thick there. You cannot understand. Unless, the Jeev, unless they hear they're an eternal servant of Krishna there, they will not start the process of bhajan. Deva Srila Gogama said that Prabhupada is a little bit like Buddha. He said anything just to sort of catch people and bring them in. Deva, in a very easy way to make it easy for us to understand that we're eternal servants of Krishna, he explained it like that. Go ah. Premananda. What is Tatastha Sakti and how Jivas came here in this world? Oh, my but jnana. not so long. <laughs> oh, my jnana, Pinirandasya, Gyananjana Salakaya, Chaksuran Militam, Yena Tasmai, Sri Gurave Nama. First, I offer my unlimited obeisances in the dust of the lotus feet of my most worshipful Diksha Gurudev. Nitalila Pravishta Om Vishnu Pad, Stotra Satatu Srimad, Srila Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, and the same unlimited obeisances in the dust of the lotus feet of my most worshipable Shiksha Gurudev, Om Vishnu Pad, Stotra Satatu Srimad, Srila Bhaktivedanta Narayan Goswami Maharaj, to all of our disciples of succession and all the assembled devotees. Srila Gurudev has ordered me to speak further about the meaning of Tatastha Shakti and how we did not fall from Goloka Vrindavan. Sri Padamadhar Maharaj explains so nicely and I'll try to take some remnants. Srila Gurudev said that it's very important to understand that the jiva did not fall from Goloka Vrindavan and that there is no maya in Goloka Vrindavan because it's by Maya that makes us fall, the influence of Maya. Because without knowing this, we won't have faith to take to Sadhana Bhakti to go to the goal of Goloka Vrindavan. Therefore, it's essential to understand that there's no Maya there. As it's stated in the first canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, in the last line, first verse, first chapter, Dhamna svena sada nerasta kuha kam sat yam param dimahi. Srila Vyasadeva is saying that I worship that Supreme Lord Sri Krishna, who is eternally living in his own abode, which is forever free from illusion. Srila Krishna Kavaraj Goswami explains that there are two kinds of living entities in this Sanatan Shiksha. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is explaining to Sanatana Goswami there are two kinds of living entities. One is the Nitya, Nitya Mukta Jiva and one is the Nitya Bada Jiva. The Nitya Mukta Jiva is manifest by Baladev Prabhu in Vrindavan and he may take part in any of the services to Krishna in Vrindavan. Also, Baladev's expansion of Mul Sankarshan in Dwarka, Matra, Maha Sankarshan in Vaikuntha, they manifest these various Nitya Mukta Jivas who are eternally engaged in the service of Maturej, Dwarkadish, or Vaikuntanath, Lord Narayan, and they have no idea what is Maya. They have never experienced what is Maya. Then, there is the Nitya Bada Jeev, or more specifically, the Anadi Bada Jeev. That is, it's not that that conditioned soul has been conditioned forever, but from a time immemorial, a time that is so long that it cannot be calculated. This Anadi Bada Jeev manifests from the Tatasta Shakti. And from that point, Tatasta, Tata means shore. So the shore is the very, very fine line 
very infinitesimal lines between the water, say the ocean, and the beach. Sometimes that line is covered by the water, and sometimes it's in the open land. So that Tatasta Shakti Jeev, that Anadya Bada Jeev, is located in the Tatasta region. The Jiva is not a manifestation, as Maharaj mentioned, of Swarup Shakti. He's a manifestation of Tatasta Shakti, which is a manifestation of Swarup Shakti. From Swarup Shakti comes the Swansa manifestations like Narayan, Korma, um, Lord Nishringadev, Matya, and the Vivinam Sajiv comes from this Tatasta Shakti. From that point, if the Jiva sh the, the Tatasta Shakti Jeev looks towards Gopi then Yoga Maya immediately transfers that Jiva to Goloka to engage eternally in the Lord's service. If that Jiva looks towards the material energy, then say Buli. Krishna Bhuli Se Jiva Nadir Bahimuk turns away, Bahimuk turns away from Krishna, then Maya immediately grabs him, covers him over, and gives him the threefold miseries. So the Tatasta area is where Karna Dakshai Vishnu resides. And this is explained by Chula Bhaktivinoda Thakur in his Jaiva Dharma. He explains how Baladev or Mulsa Sankarshan or Maha Sankarshan manifest the jivas in Vrindavan, Dwarka, Mathura, or Vaikuntha. And from Karana Dakshai Vishnu, who is located in that causal ocean or in that Viraja river, that area in between the material and spiritual world, that Tata, that jiva manifests and can look one way or another. Srila Gurudev gives the example of a blade, a sword, very sharp end, edge of a sword. And if suppose you throw mustard seeds on that edge of the sword, some of those mustard seeds will go one way and some of the mustard seeds will go another way. So Karanadakshai Vishnu gives that jiva a moment of choice by emanating from his glands, from his forehead, the light coming from his forehead, he tells the jiva, I'm giving you now some light so that you can have intelligence to think about it for a moment. So when that jiva, those jivas who turn away from the Lord, they are immediately captured by the illusory energy. So tatta means that shoreline between matter and spirit, and from that line, he can choose Krishna. Anyone who's already engaged in Krishna's service, parang dvistva nivartante, by experiencing the higher taste, he's completely free from the lower taste, so there's never any chance for him to fall from Goloka Vrindavan. And knowing this, by the mercy of Gurudev and our Guru Varga, we have faith to take to Sadhan Bhakti, to go back to home, back to Godhead. Explain well. First of all, we should know who are jivas. Mamai vanso, jivu loke, jivu kusta. It seems that they have their part and parcel of Krishna. But Srila Jivu Swami has told you in his Paramatma Sandarbha. Really, Krishna is Sat. Chit Ananda, Sambit Sandhini Rajini, with all. But for to play a pastime, past he removed all his Shakti and only kept Tatastha Shakti. Only. What is Tatastha Shakti? It may be called that Jivas has a transformation of that Shakti. So, Jivas 
are only part of Krishna when Krishna is with only Tatastha Shakti. So, this is the difference between other Vaishnava Sampradaya and our. They tell that Jivas are part and parcel of Krishna, but we don't. Parinam, Shakti Parinam. We are Shakti Parinam. This is the difference between other Vaishnava Sampradaya and our us. So, Krishna, uh, Jivas has come from Krishna, but a transformation of only when Krishna is along with Tatastha Shakti, then Jiva comes. Krishna with the Tatastha Shakti, that is Jiva. Tatastha Shakti, Shakti, like Jiva, Maya Shakti, Chit Shakti, so this Tatastha Shakti, with, and then it comes. As she told, Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur in Jayu Dharam has told, from Baldev, so many numberless Nidya Siddha. I don't, don't, don't. Take out. Take out. Now what I am going they search in Golok Vrindavan, Krishna, and in Vaikuntha, Sankarshan, he manifests so many Nitya Siddha Jivas who are serving Narayan, Sri Ramchandra, Nishingha, Baman, Kalki, all others. And after this, from Karnadzai Vishnu, oh, all the jivas coming from him, who are now Baddha, from him, how coming? Like the rays of sun, particles, hmm? particles. They have all the qualities which in Golo and Vaikunt Jivad Nitya Siddha has. All qualities there. But they are very infinite. So they are very weak, very weak. And in the side, oh, Maya is there. This side. And this side, Yogamaya is there. So, as he told, on a sword or blade, if he will fell, anyhow you will fell in the middle, but they must go here and there. So, by chance, the jivas, having all quality but in very minute, they are bound to see here and there. If by chance they saw towards Maya, at once Maya without delay see. And covered with shuttle body and growth body. And he forgot everything now. So, we should know first. The jiva are part and parcel of Krishna, it is right. But all the jivas we are in this world are from Karnadisai Vishnu and for Anadi Nitta, uh, Nitta like Shaitanya Chaitamit, it has been told. Nitta uh, here, Nitya means not eternal, but Anadi. Time memorial. memorial. They are now here. 
and those who look towards Jogmaya, that is Vaikuntha, at once Maya, Jogmaya attracted them and engaged in oh, Krishna's Krishna. So, Jivas has not come from Golok Vrinda. As they say, when I was coming, uh, when I was in India, the leaders of his school, they told me, we want you to take in western countries, but two conditions. You cannot tell that Jivas has come from Golu, eh, you will have to tell. And secondly, secondly one thing more. Or anything else. I don't remember. I deny it. I deny it. I don't. Oh. oh, one thing more. They told that you should not tell that Srila uh, Prabhupada has Path uh, Sarathi. Pasarati they have. Uh, Rukmani is Bhav Pasarati they have. Uh, I told I must tell that he has not named. He has not named. Then I Then this is Jiva Tattva. But he has told two examples. Sujan Sakirana Jano Agni Jala Chat. What meaning? So Jans and Agnichwala, two things. Oma Jnana Timanandhasya, Jnanandana Slakya, Chakshur Mulatam Jena, Tasmai Sri Gurave Nama. Oh, one thing more, you should also explain. Bhedathet Prakash, why he has told? And then this point. So, Jan Sakira. So, Srila Sanatana Goswami Pad has posed the question, Who am I? And in reply, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he said, Jivera Swarabhoi Krishna Nitya Das. The Vaishnavas have discussed and explained this. Now we come to the next line. Krishnera tathasta sakti bhaira bhait prakash. That the living entity is the prakash. That means a manifestation of Sri Krishna's marginal potency, tathasta shakti. But this manifestation has been called bhaira abhait prakash. He is one with and also different from Sri Krishna. In what sense? In the sense that, every, first of all, it's described <coughs> by Srila Jiva Goswami part, that if two things have the same origin, hmm, and they are also not independent of their origin, then they cannot be considered to be entirely different. So, similarly, the living entity, he has his origin from the energy of Sri Krishna, and in that sense, he's non different from Sri Krishna. He's always under the control of Sri Krishna. Because whether he's in the material world, being controlled by the three gunas, Sattva, Rajas and Tamas, or whether he's in the spiritual world, being inspired by Yoga Maya, in every state, he's never independent at any time. He has no independent existence. But at the same time, that living entity, who is a part, a manifestation of Krishna's energy, who is never independent from Sri Krishna and therefore can be considered to be one with Krishna, at the same time, he's not Krishna. He's, he's very minute. Now, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he wants to expand and give an example, a very simple example, a simple analogy by which we can understand how the living entity is bade and abade, one with and different from Sri Krishna. So he said, Suryangsu Kiran Jaiche Agni Jalachai. The first example Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said gave is that Why is Bheda Bhed? Why is the reason? 
What is the means of bhed and abhed? He is Krishna and not Krishna. He is equal to Krishna in one sense and in another sense he is not. How? So, now Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is explaining that bhed abhed. Suryansu Kiran Jaiche. From the sun emanate millions of tiny particles, tiny photons. So, just as the sun is effulgent, just as the sun is the source of heat and light, so those tiny photons are also effulgent, they are a source of heat and light. But there's a very big difference. The when there will be no sun seen, oh, they in darkness once they will be, they will not be seen. So they will be like what? These things. Understand? And so the particle of the sun has the qualities of the sun, but in a very, very minute quantity. The sun is the origin of all the photons. The photons are not the origin of the sun. So in this way, we can also say that the sun, whenever you see the sun, you see the light of the sun also. They will not, the sunlight is never independent of the sun. So in this way, the living entities are like rays, they are like particles in the rays of the sun. And now, Agni Jwala. Mm, Chaitanya Mahapu, when he gave this example, he was not entirely satisfied. And there's a reason, and that is that in this example, even though the analogy explains many things to do with the living entity and the, and, and the Supreme Lord, there are some things that does not explain. So he gave the example, he said, Agni Jala Chai. The living entity is like the spark of a fire. The spark and the fire are of the same quality, but different quantity, again, like in the first example. But if a spark will jump out from the fire and land in a place like stone, then what will happen? Its qualities become extinguished. So the living entity who goes into Maya, though by nature he is spiritual, though he is eternal, though he is Satchidananda, just like Bhagavan is, he becomes completely unconscious of his own nature. But if a spark jumps out from a fire and lands in, say, a haystack, right, then what will happen? The dharma of the spark is to burn. But if that, if that spark is in the right atmosphere, though the living entity himself is very tiny, his dharma, that, sorry, though the spark itself is very tiny, its dharma, which is to burn, can become so powerful, just like the original fire from which that spark came. So in the same way, it will burn the whole jungle and everything. <laughs> so, in the same way, if a living entity mm, will be in the very conducive atmosphere, that is, he will get the shelter of Swarup Shakti, he will engage in Bhakti, then what will happen? The Dharma of the Jiva, which is Prem, will expand so rapidly and become so powerful, so huge, that even Bhagavan himself will come under the control of the Prem Dharma of that living entity. Hmm? <laughs> and, and therefore, though Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gave the example of the sun and the photon, he was not fully satisfied and gave the example of the spark, because by this example it shows that the tiny living entity has the potential taking shelter of Prema Bhakti to even control the heart of the Supreme Lord. So, very good discussion. And you should remember all these things. Then, what? Is it true that most of the jivas, the tattva jivas, fall down into the material world, and only a very few go to the local... It cannot be shown. Who will look towards Maya, they will come. And those who will see there... That is I'm telling. How it can be told that, oh, many of the... They come and less they are going. How we can tell? <laughs> no, you cannot tell. 
No, no. By chance, if you go there, they have quality that. All the qualities of Sikh Dajil they have. <laughs> Some of the speakers said the jivas have a choice, but when you gave the example of the the mustard seeds on the blade, you said it was by chance. Yes, by chance. Well, Bhakti Vinod Thakur has said everything is like chance. So we should follow. The misuse, the it is vichitra. <laughs> <laughs> In, in Chaitanya Chaitamrit, it has been told, Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami has told, Jagadananda, Jagadananda, Prem Vibhat Sune Jaijan, Prema Swarup Gyan Pai Prema Dhan. So, I think if Krishna Das Kaviraj has told in Chaitanya Charitamrit that Jagadananda has made a book, Prem Vibhat, then it is authentic from Jagadananda. So, no doubt. We have no doubt that this book is written by Jagadananda. <coughs> Bhakti Vinod Thakur. Oh, Jagadanande, Premibhat, Seju, Yan, Premara, Sarup, Jane, Pai, Premadhan. He has glorified so much. If he, anyone will hear Premibhat, oh, easily he can have Prem, but he will have to follow then. Otherwise, he is hearing and oh, nothing will happen. He must follow, totally follow then. Krishna Prem, he will know the Swarupa Prem and he will have Krishna Prem. Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur in his Prem, in his Bhakti Vinod Thakur has in Amrit Pravah, he had commentary of these uh, that Jagadananda Prabhu Charitra Je Aprakit Prem Vibhartha Nama Granthe Likhi Ache Taha. He has written that Jagadananda has made a Prem Vibhartha book and Prema, Prem, Premananda Brahmachari. First is Prem Das Brahmachari. Devadhar. Oh, he used to read this book and explain and weep and weep. So this book is very, very high class of book. In Gaurgona Desika, Des Deepika, Kavi Karnapur has written that anyhow, Jagadanand Prabhu is Shakta Bhama. But then Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu Vibhin Rasagya so many Rastatva Gyata Tara Polishen Urira Basalya Mukha Puri means Paramananda Puri Paramananda Puri and Ramananda Suddha Sakha or Govinda Suddha Dasa Govinda Mahaprabhu Sarvan Suddha Dasya and Gadadha Jagadananda Saruper Mukha Ramananda. Atat four. Gadadha Pandit, Jagadananda Pandit, Sarup Damodar, and Ramananda. They have four Madhurras. Yes. Yeah, 
both Arjun like, Arjun mixed. And then Sarupa Damodar Mukharash, like Gopi, Lalita, Vishakha, like. Srila, uh, Bhakti Vinod Thakur, anyone has written. That in this book, Jagadanin himself written that I want to serve Radhika and Mahaprabhu wants to push me for Dwarka. I cannot go anyhow if he will. It means what? He is like a very near and dear gopi hmm, of Srimati Radhika. So he is not Satyabhama, but in any way Rukmini, um, Mahaprabhu told Gadadhari is Rukmini, Rukmini Bhav. And and he is Jagadananda, Bhamma Bhav. Bhav. So, <coughs> only for this Mahaprabhu sometimes he has told us. Oh, she is like Asaru. But, <coughs> so, Jagadananda Prabhu has written this book, and I want to read you a class by explanation. So that you should follow these instructions and be pure bhakta. Go Pramana. Hare Krishna. So, just Rudev has started his class today, and day after tomorrow, Sunday is Annakut Maha Mahotsav. So, after weekend, some devotees want to leave due to their some business and job. Some devotees requested for initiation. So, we are thinking to do initiation on Monday. But some devotees requested, somebody told just now, they leave Mon uh, Sunday night. So, initially tomorrow morning, who is leaving Sunday? And they have to be registered their name with us. Must be, must be recommended by the senior devotee. Because who live close to you must be recommended by the senior devotee that you are qualified for any initiation. Here, following for regular principle or not, and who wants second initiation, they are chanting 16 hours or not, we don't know. So you must be recommended by any senior devotee. So initiation will take place tomorrow, 9 a.m. Initiation will take place tomorrow, 9 a.m. So whoever wants initiation, for male devotee, have to shave your hair and clean cloth, have to come tomorrow, 9 a.m. Yes. One more announcement. All the devotees, I know you all want to have darshan, private darshan, personal darshan with Sri Guru Dev. Uh, we are uh, sorry that 